All right then, uh, welcome to Unit 5-1, uh, Introduction to Quadratic Equations. And we'll be seeing um, something uh, along the lines, something called parabolas. We'll compare those to linear functions and so on, which we'll see coming up right about now. First, we'll look at a math career here very quickly with you, an electrical engineer. Uh, these are some highly trained people. Uh, they design, develop, test, and supervise the manufacture of electrical equipment. You can read this over here on the right if you'd like. You can see... Uh, the salary structure right there and you can also look at the math that you're going to need but a uh, highly competitive field and well in demand uh, for now and as the university was pointing out that I was reading um, into the future there electrical engineer so if there's a career that you have interest in learning about uh, just leave me a note with your email address and I'll forward you more about that if that's something that you're interested in here's our standard 21.0 we're going to graph uh, and understand really not, we're not going to do too much graphing we're just going to recognize graphs uh, their shapes y-intercepts roots x-intercepts zeros things like this as we go forward all right today we're going to learn to verify if points on a graph may be a solution to a quadratic equation maybe a solution we'll see what that means well, now here's a new shape for you um, you've seen these of course this is a uh, the arch in St. Louis here on the left, and here's the Golden Gate Bridge up in Northern California by uh, San Francisco there. Notice these shapes have particular um, attributes. They have seemingly a high point. They have two uh, definitive markers where they might um, like be touching the ground here or reach a high point here and a point here, and they have a low point on this one. You can see, of course, these are inverse relations to each other. This one here opens downward the arch like this and this of course opens upward and we'll see what differences that might mean here's um, other forms of parabolas that you might be recognized already this being a satellite dish has in the shape of a parabola here's a golfer and when you uh, hit the strike a golf ball it's going to travel up in an arc and land again here's another image of that um, something like this these are called parabolas and they're similar to linear functions in the sense that um, they travel in a, in, a, in a certain way across a graph but of course you'll know that a linear function or a straight line doesn't have a curve in it and of course this does here all right a quadratic equation in two variables the x and y can be written in this form so what you see here in red you need to add to your notes right about now notice that the thing up here actually write this down um, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So for example, this would be a, a typical example, y equals 4x squared plus 3x plus 2. And I want you to notice um, this relationship here, which we'll see today or tomorrow. Or Notice how the this coefficient a, in this case, is 4. This coefficient b is 3. And the constant here, c, is 2. Notice the x's line up nicely, and the x squared is the same as in this term down here. Okay, A, B, and C are real numbers, and notice this, please. A is not equal to 0. Of course, if A was equal to 0, then this whole piece would go away, and that would change our um, function there completely. It would no longer curve, actually. It would be a straight line. So let's move forward here and see what we got. Okay. Nope. And nope. Let me see one more chance. There we go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, remember the format for the quadratic equation uh, because later the A, B, and C are going to be parts of other equations. So this right here, we just pointed out the A, B, and the C piece. We're going to be really be focused on that as we go forward. All right, here's uh, the equation y equals x squared. Now this, uh, even though it's a shorter version, is still a quadratic equation. It's just the shortened version of what you see down below. 1x squared plus 0x plus 0. If we have zeros, of course, as either coefficients or constants, we just leave them off. So y equals x squared is the smallest quadratic equation you can actually have, okay? Just so you might see that it's still a quadratic equation. All right, here is the general form this quadratic equation of y equals x squared is shown in this graph. Notice that this graph is not linear, of course. A linear is a straight line. You'll know that um, the first uh, four letters in the word linear are line. And so we notice here that this is not a linear function, but it does actually have this curve in it. 
All right, uh, the graph formed is known as a parabola, like we talked about before. All right, when plotted, uh, the graph is a quadratic function because it passes something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test is something that we'll have to understand in Algebra 2 and pre-calculus. They will really uh, bring this forward, but I want to introduce this to you now. This will be something we're responsible to know. Vertical line test is actually quite simple. If you'll notice what happens here with the blue line, we're just going to pass the blue line through the function. The vertical line test shows that the vertical line intercepts or touches the graph at one and only one point. So you'll notice right here the blue line stops, it hits the graph at one point. Okay. If this vertical line, any vertical line that you draw through a graph and you pass it over the graph, left to right, right to left, if it touches the graph one time only, then we call this a function. So notice it passes through, even on this side, uh, it does only touch the graph at one place. So this has a, this fits the definition of what we call a function. So passing through or passing back the other way, it's the same. Which of these is a function? I've got a little bit of blurry here, but it's got, we've got a red uh, par parabolic shape and we have this blue one here. Let's take a look. If we use the vertical line test and pass through, we've got two distinct um, shapes here. If we stop here at the red one, how many times does it touch the, uh, the graph? Well, in this case, it's only going to touch the graph in one place, so that seems to qualify. But what if we pass it through to the blue? Notice that it touches the blue graph here and here. Well, that's more than one, of course, so the blue is going to fail as a function, but the red indeed is a function because the graph only hits it at one spot. Uh, the vertical line only touches the graph at one spot, I should say. All right, your turn. You tell me now. If you just had an imaginary line here, and we drew a line and crossed it through this function, you can just pick any old line you want. Let's just say we draw a line straight down here. Uh, does that touch the graph at one time only or more than one? Well, obviously, it's going to touch it more than one, so our answer here is no, it's not a function. How about this one? Imagine a vertical line passing across this. Yes or no? That's correct. Yes, it is a function. Very good. How about this one here? Would this be a function? Would it pass the vertical line test? Again, we're going to say yes. How about this um, almost circle here? If you drew a line across and traveled through, considering let's say it's an entire shape there, then no, this would not pass the vertical line test. If you drew a vertical line, it would pass through the red and the green down here. How about this one? This is actually a, uh, a cubic function. Uh, cubic meaning uh, it has an exponent of 3 and you'll notice that it passes through the x-axis three times. This indeed would pass as a function because the vertical line would pass through and only hit the graph in one place. How about this one? This quartic function, it has, how many times does it hit the x-axis? One, two, three, four times. So this would have an x to the fourth or, or something like that in, involved in the equation. Definitely a function um, because the vertical line would only touch that once, anywhere you stopped it. All right, just like linear equations and their graphs, uh, for quadratic equations and their graphs, all points on the graph are solutions to the equation. All points, so if we pick any ordered pair and it was actually on the graph, we call that a solution. Or the other way around, if it's a solution, then it's on the graph. So without graphing, tell if each ordered pair is a solution for the quadratic equation. So here's just an example for you to look at. So just uh, notice the guy up here just to watch, please. You've got 2 and 4. Remember that this is x and this is y. So I'm going to plug 2 in for x and 4 in for y. Let's do that and see what happens. Is it true that 2 squared equals 4? Well, of course, that's true. 4 does equal 4. So yes, this right here, 2, 4, if I drew this on a graph, would appear right on the line of that shape that looks like a parabola. So if we drew this, we would get this shape here and 2, 4 would appear right on the line. Okay. How about this one, 2, negative 4? So again, plug this in for x and this in for y. Is it true that negative 4 is equal to 2 squared? Well, by now we probably realize if you square any non-zero number, you're going to get a positive value, never a negative. So in this case, no, negative 4 is not equal to 4. So on this particular shape, we're going to see an example of this in just a minute, but this would not be on the line. How about this one? Negative 2, positive 4. Negative 2, positive 4. So this is x and this is y. 
plug those in, is it true that four is equal to negative two squared? Well, a negative two times negative two indeed is four. So yeah, that would be on the line. Now we're not gonna have to graph these, but you could also check your answers by graphing. Two, four would appear here. With that you'll notice is on the graph. Uh, the other one we found was two negative four. Well, if you plot two negative four, is this on the red line? Well, obviously it's not, so it's not a solution. And negative two, four, indeed is on the graph so again there it is so if you were to graph this or as we'll see um, with maybe some graphing calculators in our work you'll see that there are points that are plotted on a line in this case on this parabolic line here alright so without graphing tell if each ordered pair is a solution to the quadratic equation so I've given you one here y equals negative 3x squared minus 4 this is going to challenge your uh, order of operations now like we've always stressed remember exponents first then multiply by the negative 3 and then subtract 4. So go ahead and um, you got 2 2 comma 1 and you got another order pair negative 1 negative 7 so give those a try. Go ahead and pause the video try those on your own and see what you come up with. Alright then how about we plug in that 2 for the X and the 1 for the Y so let's plug a 2 in here right for the X and I'm gonna end up with uh, all this here, let's just see if the right side actually equals the left side. Negative 3 times 2 squared minus 4. Remember, do the exponents first. So I'm going to end up with negative 3 times 4 minus 4. Negative 3 minus 4. Well, negative 12 subtract 4 is not going to be equal to 1, so that's going to be a no. How about this one over here? Negative 1, negative 7. Let's plug that negative 1 in there. And we'll just keep the left side the same, of course, but this is going to be a positive 1 times negative 3. Is it true that negative 3 times 1 minus 4 is equal to this? Negative 3 subtract 4, and indeed, yes. So in this case, if we were to actually graph this or see it on a calculator graphed out, this point would not be on the line, but this point would be on the line. All right, and that's it for Unit 5-1. If you want to see some more information there, you can go to this website. You can type in this code here, 9-1. This just means Chapter 9, Lesson 1 in our textbook. And look at Video Example 1 there. All right, then. We'll see you soon.